Jeez, let's get into this. Uh, one minute till we go. Hit the like button. Let's get this thing started. Now that's some love making music right there. Start in three, two, one. Hello, everybody. Hey, are we back in the live? Let's go live. There it is, folks. Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic host, Bachelor Nation News. And we are here. Teresa said, I was so wrong. I got fooled and believed him about no sex. Listen, I think Zach believed him about no sex. But uh, as is the case sometimes in the fantasy suite, you done slip things up. You done slip things up, and that's exactly what Zach had done did, is he slipped things up and slipped things in, as some commenters have said. Now, we're not here to trivialize sex, but I think the real story isn't the sex. It's the part where Gabby goes, I thought we weren't going to tell people. Like, clearly Gabby had a talk with Zach, be like, nobody has to know. And Zach's like, so Jesse, I um, I'm going to bang somebody last night. Jesse's like, and then Jesse does that like whisper talk that he does. And he's Jesse's like, if that's the process you need to do, then you do that process. Mom of three boys says thumbnail is great. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is a oops. That backfired face. Um, what do they say? If you choose to forego the fantasy it, by foregoing your individual room, you are going for the fornication suite. Excuse me, the fantasy suite. All right. But either way, it makes you wonder, what if Katie and Gabby had switched places? What if Ga what if Katie was the second date that he slipped up with? And would have things played out differently? We don't know. Either way, I think Gabby has a right to feel the way she feels. You know why? Because um, in order for Zach to reach contrition, is that the word I want? In, <laughs> in order for Zach to f show full remorse to Katie. He's like, I'm so sorry. I made a mistake. And then, and then Gabby's like, Oh, I was a mistake. You know, that type of deal. All right. So we have Gabby and Krabby, Krabby being her mood and the city that they're in and no crab jokes for me today. As I say, uh, you know, I don't want to get pinched by the, uh, by the, um, I don't know the shore police or whatever. Um, Chloe said, honestly, can't believe we got a fantasy suite this problematic. Expectations exceeded. Sarah said, yeah, all just really strange. So do me a favor. Call in with your thoughts, 401-213-9828. I love your phone calls. It gives me a chance to not talk. And uh, I know my wife appreciates that. Um, Caitlin said he was thinking with the wrong head. And I think we all can agree. Boy, he should have um, hooked up with it. I mean, I thought... 
I thought what he was gonna do once he hooked up with Gabby. I thought he was gonna be like, Ariel, can I get, can I go, can I do that date again? Cause we didn't bang, but now that I bang Gabby, I'm already in trouble. It's kind of one of those deal. So yeah, like I said before, the idea of the fantasy suite is sort of a false um, hall pass. It it everyone agrees to it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't come with out consequence. BT said it wasn't fair to Gabby because she didn't have any agency in the situation. He was like, yeah, I have to be honest. Falling in love with you, but I have to tell everyone. Yeah, great point. How about Gabby? How about what Gabby has to do? What if Gabby didn't want you to, you know, what if it was important? What if, you know, because some people are like, yeah, cool, whatever. Like, you know, no big deal. And other people are like, other, you can feel any certain way. Um, Kim Jaleen said, what just happened? Do you mean like the whole episode or what do you mean? Like you be more specific with the question. Julie Halverson says Gabby was right. He was directly looking at Katie at the end, overcompensating to Katie and feeling more uncomfortable around Gabby. And as I'll say in tomorrow's recap, um, once he told Katie that he was intimate with Gabby, um, that uh, he was lucky to be dating a nurse because his relationship at that point was on life support. All right, we just got a down vote, so that's fun. Uh, so if anyone wants to counter that with some up votes, hit the like button. Uh, I, I personally, you know, we are not everyone's cup of tea. That's totally fair, but let's get some likes in this uh, piece. 358 people in the chat. So we're going to open up the voicemails. I'm sure we have a lot. Again, um, no no spoilers. Let's go to the, let's click here. Um, we are getting so many people in the chat room right now. So I want to share the rules. No spoilers. You are allowed to send me super chats. Yeah, that's right. I will not stop you if you want to donate money to the channel. It helps keep the live streams going. And um, I'm going to get this, this song in the background sounded like a phone call. Um, I don't expect any phone calls today, but we'll have to see how it goes. Uh, no name calling. No cheese. No creeps. And super chats appreciated. And no spoilers. Don't forget that. No spoilers. Okay, so let's get into it. I'm sure we've got... A lot of voicemails, so let's see. I'm going to open up the... Oh, we do. Oh, boy. We've got a lot of voicemails. Let's get into it. Leave voicemails. Try to keep it under a minute and call the number, 412139828. Let me know what you think. Um, hey, Dave. It's David, formerly of New York, formerly of Illinois, now in Hawaii. Wow. Hey, so I didn't Hawaii. see the Aloha. show. I'll watch it later, but uh, I, I got enough from your opening. Um, you know who has to be the happiest person uh, tonight? is Clayton, because so he's funny. now off the hot seat if he ever was still on it, because Zach basically said, you know, fantasy suite, hold my beer. So <laughs> uh, that's that's how I'm seeing this play out, and it was all self-induced. I, I think what they should do going forward is simply say, I'm going to be intimate with all three of you, and, you know, tap out if you want, but, you know, let's... Uh, it's a process. It's a process. Anyway, talk uh, to you. I like it. I like it. Dave Dave in um, Hawaii says forced intimacy. Now, I know that's not what you meant, but it's kind of a funny point. If they all just agree. Now, now this would make more sense if there were three bachelors and three ladies. Like if, if it was not one guy hooking up with three women, but if they each had their other options, then it would be it would make more sense. But the power dynamic on this show is so skewed in a direction it would never be. Zach would never be in a situation where Gabby, Katie, or Ariel would put up with this. But he tried his best. He just didn't realize that whenever you say, I want to share my truth, it's like only share part of your truth. You're going to really piss people off. Because as we saw with Katie, she almost was coming off by saying, hey, I built up the walls. I learned how to disassociate. I literally put my fingers in my ears and go, la, 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 la. And then Zach literally takes her headphone out and goes, I hooked up with someone else. And she's like, no, you didn't have to tell me. But everyone's different. You know, there may be a case where this works out best for Zach because they you find out now versus possibly finding out uh, weeks from now when you're watching the show back or months from now because they filmed this months ago. All right, let's go, for, let's go to Jen in Illinois. Hi, this is Jen, and I'm calling from Illinois, and I am just thinking that it would almost be smart for The Bachelor to uh, start having more of a fantasy date on the when there's two left also. 
So then they don't feel that extra, extra pressure with the three. Um, I don't know. Just a thought. Anyway, thank you. I love watching your show. You're awesome. Oh, Have a good one. Thanks, Jen. You you might Jen might have the of uh, uh the award for the best opening energy. L- listen to listen one more time to Jen just sticking her intro. Listen. Hi, this is Jen, and I'm calling from Illinois. If Jen were selling me something, I'd be like, Jen, what do I need to buy? She's like, Hi, this is Jen from Illinois. Your uh, insurance is not okay. Fine. Yeah, that's I bet Jen, you must work in sales. You uh anyway, thank you so much for the phone call. Jen says, so we have David saying we have to we should force no, I'm just kidding, he didn't say that. But he said, uh, everyone should have sex. He had the Oprah mindset, you get sex, you we all get orgasms. Look under your chair. That's an orgasm. Oh, I got an orgasm. Um, whereas Jen is saying, maybe let maybe three's too many. But of course, all these solutions would make the show less interesting, you know? Yeah, this is Bob. Why didn't Zach and Katie's overnight morning actors, why wasn't that shown? Thank you. You know, maybe, and I don't know, maybe it just wasn't that interesting. Uh, Obviously, they got, they, maybe they talked about not hooking up. Because to me, it wasn't clear that Zach and Katie didn't hook up until the part where Katie says, you must be the, when Katie says to Gabby, you must be the one who hooked up, right? To me, I wasn't sure who hooked up. I'm not really sure. Yeah, if anyone knows why that wasn't aired, let me know. All right, let's go to Aunt Mimi in Pittsburgh. You're up next. Hi, Dave. This is Mimi from Pittsburgh. I left you a message before, but it wasn't about The Bachelor. But you know what? I don't have enough time to talk about what was screwy about tonight, except that, uh, Katie's date was stupid. <laughs> All right. I'm glad you liked my comment. Bye. Katie's date was stupid. And Mimi doesn't have the time. Mimi, Mimi does not have the time to go over the malarkey. That was tonight's episode. Uh, thank you so much, Mimi. Appreciate it. Appreciate the phone call. Um, yeah, Katie State, you know, this, look, I don't know if they realize how dark the mangroves get when you're in like a, like a well-covered forest. It got so dark, they didn't have a light. And I'm think I'm sitting there going, listen, I'm not arguing with anybody while my feet are in the water of a mangrove. I don't know what que- creatures are in there and I don't want to find out. All right, let's go to our next voicemail. Our good friend Bruce from Oregon, you're up next. Bruce from Oregon. Dave, a uh, pretty wild episode. And while I was watching, you know, I saw the uh, monkeys there at the end uh, charging Katie. And it just crossed my mind. Here's a hypothetical for you. If you had a brand new uh, coconut milk uh, ice mocha latte and you were so thirsty and you're walking down the street, but suddenly you had to decide... You know, would you battle one Bruce-sized uh, monkey who wanted to take your coffee or ten monkey-sized Bruces? Uh, which group would you fight? Uh, let me know what you think. And uh, great episode. Talk to you later. Bye. Bruce in Oregon. So the hypothetical is, uh, let's assume Bruce is a normal uh, adult male. Would you rather have ten monkeys of small size or one monkey the size of Bruce. I'm taking 10 small monkeys cuz I tell you what the monkeys they'll rip your they'll literally rip your genitals off. They don't mess around. I'm not kidding. This isn't that's not some sort of they will rip your face off. They don't care. They're strong. Uh, but they're also kind of like skittish. So you sh- you you exert your dominance. When I when I was attacked by the monkey he looked at me dead in the eyes, and he just started peeing on the ground. And I was thinking, oh, I should start peeing. I couldn't. I was scared. Uh, I had pee paralysis. But, I, uh, but I'm looking at the monkey. And I was in Bali, which isn't far from Thailand. You know, I was relatively speaking. These are a different, uh, uh, same, same type of long-tailed monkeys. These guys are fast. You're not supposed to make eye contact with them. And I don't have the tape to prove this, but if you watched the blooper of Katie getting harassed by the monkey, it had giant testicles. Those testicles were on a 20-pound monkey or whatever it weighed, right? Those balls were so big, if, if that was anatomically scaled up to the size of a human, they would literally be like giant, giant beach balls. Um, either way, point being, I was impressed um, and frightened at the same time. 
Um, all right, let's go. This okay. Let's go to this next one. I think we're going to Kentucky on this call. Hi, I'm Kelly calling from Kentucky, and I know we only saw it in the preview, so we really don't know what happened. But when Zach was talking to his parents, and he said, "I was trying to do something to help everybody out, and it bit me in the ass," I screamed. Like he's really going to make this seem like he was doing everyone a favor, and he's a victim of something. Um, that's it. Kelly in Kentucky. Yeah, we'll have to see how that plays out. How funny. I mean, look, I, and I hate, to, uh, I hate to hypothesize what went down in that fantasy suite, but this is the second. I've never, I never knew I'd be so curious about Zach's fantasy suites, right? With Rachel Recchia, something happened. We don't know what, but something happened, and he leaves her being all weird. With Gabby, I'm kind of like, how did that go down? If Air, no, and no offense to Gabby, if Ariel wasn't able to seduce Zach while, when she was trying to, assume, you know, assuming you know they had good chemistry and all that, Gabby was like, all right, well, I just won't try. You know, she was like, well, I won't try to seduce you. I'll just put my my uh, my brace face in and I'll um, get my, you know, put on my onesie and my ugly, my period underwear, you know, whatever the hell's going on. <laughs> and uh, next thing you know, they're smoking a cigarette the next morning. You go, what did I miss? What did I miss there, Gabby? Old Gabby from Vermont. The Vermonster. Um, and again, it is, and I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm being creepy. All right, Celeste, you're up. Hey, Dave. It's me, Celeste. I'm calling from Beeville, Texas. And tonight's episode, I definitely had very mixed emotions. I mean, I thought the fantasy suites were, um, were beautiful, especially like the scenery and the white lotus sign was Definitely very giving. I don't know if anybody knows that. That was that was surreal. Um, but I loved how Zach he his heart was in the right place when he made the no sex pact and everything, but it just went all a wall after that. And and then for him to go and tell Katie and then get all upset, it was just it was a whole lot, a whole lot. Well, anyway, thanks. Bye. Yeah, this sort of liar. You know the movie Liar, Liar. It's um, it's a beautiful uh, documentary. No, it's about uh, it's a fiction. Uh, but it's about uh, what the hell's the name? Uh, Jim Carrey. And for whatever reason, he's put on a spell where he's not allowed to lie because he he was lying so much as a lawyer and all these things. So he has to tell the truth. And um. I feel like that's Zach in a way. And that's a personality type. Some people can't like get past and not in again, would would you consider him not disclosing what happened to lying in a normal relationship? Not disclosing something isn't necessarily lying, but it's something. Whereas in these relationships, there's been a precedent set that like don't kiss and tell, but also whoever quote unquote wins this thing is probably going to find out. So you might as well have your stuff in order. And as Sarah says, her husband so poetically here in the comment section, she says, my husband walked out during the Katie conversation and said, oh, buddy, you either got to bang none or bang them all. And that's such a truth right there. Hey, that's a that's a merch shirt right there. Bang one or bang bang them all. But don't try to don't bang two out of three. You know what I mean? Uh, you are catching yourself in some uh, uh, troubles there. Uh, bridge over troubled water. 401-213-9828. I think we're throwing fastballs right now. It's not a no hitter, but we're winning, folks. 401-213-9828. Took me a little while to get back in working order, but Diet uh, Coke is by my side. I ate a bag full of pretzels, and I got a blistered fingernail from it all. Uh, how was your fantasy suites? Okay, a couple more. I got tons of uh, tons of open lines if you want to call in. 401-213-9828. I'd love to hear from somebody new. I'm sure there's someone going, oh my gosh, I don't know. Call in. We, we love new people. Um, all right, so here's a phone call that I got at 6.50 p.m. my time. West Coast, which means this was right before the show actually ended. Hey, I'm not going to say where I'm from because, oh, my God, Katie just got ripped off. Oh, my God. They were God. talking. He's like, you want to go to the fantasy suite? It's right here. And they went right 10 steps, and it was the crappiest room ever. Worst fantasy suite ever. But then again, he's done the worst job on fantasy suite dates anyway. Good points. Yeah, Katie got the short end of the stick. But enough about Zach. Hey, oh folks, my come on. God. 
wrong button. Oh, I had the wrong button. He got, she got the fan, she got the short end of the stick. But enough about Zach. All right, that's better. Okay, very good. <laughs> Okie dokie. Let's go to it. We have uh, some voicemails rolling in. We have Dave in David in Canada, our second Dave. Hi, Dave. Sabine from Canada. Oh no, no, this isn't a Dave. You said hi, Dave. Hi, Dave. Sabine from Canada. Sabine. And one thought for tonight is that they definitely don't really have good psychologists there or therapists there because any normal person would have given the advice to Zach to calm down and to keep that information to himself. Um, I'm really flabbergasted that no one told him to not reveal what had happened with... Um, I've heard her name already. Um, Gabby. A fantasy night, too. I don't know why I forgot her name. i blanking. Anyways, there was bad advice. That's my point. Have a good evening. Thank you so much for calling in. The Bachelor is trending. We had Gabby trending. What happened during your overnight day? <laughs> this is it. This is what I want to know. What happened to your overnight day with Rachel? Clearly, we want to know what the trends are. Please tell us. All right, let's see what else we have here. Bachelor Nation realizing it was Gabby after thinking it was Ariel or Katie all week. No, I'm telling you, Gabby, Gabby pulled out. She, uh, and again, I'm not saying, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to be, see, say creepy, be creepy where I say this, but what you realize is that Zach probably just had a better connection with Gabby the whole time that move that transcended whatever he thought he had with Zach. I don't know. Um, whatever he had with Ariel. Anyway. Imagine having to confess to Jesse Palmer that you broke your self-imposed arbitrary sex rule. This is so embarrassing. Yeah, that's the big deal. If he didn't, if he didn't um, sort of preach that he was going to be abstaining from sex, then he probably would have never had the bar set high enough where he had to tell others, oh my gosh, I did this with Gabby. I don't know. Either way, let's go to some more voicemails. I think we're all on the same page here. Strange stuff. Brianna in New York, you're up. Hi, Dave. This is Brianna calling from New York. Um, I just wanted to say this whole thing felt so forced. I don't know why Zach felt the need to tell on himself. Um, I feel like gone are the days that they used to be able to hook up with whoever and no one needed to say anything. It was just kind of unwritten. Um, lately, it's just been the topic, and I feel like it's because that's partially because it's produced. I feel you only need to disclose that you slept with other people in the fantasy suite if someone directly asks you, did you sleep with anyone else in the fantasy suite? Because that means so much to me. Otherwise, it doesn't need to be said. It doesn't need to be stated. And if he was worried about it ever coming out, then, like, tell that to the girl that you proposed to at the end. Just say, I want to get this off my chest before we move forward with our engagement. Um, I think that's what makes the most sense here. If that. Um, otherwise, like, you know that it's probably like a 90% chance that he blinked all of them. I mean, that's what Katie said herself. Like, I had a feeling. I just, you confirmed it unprovoked. Really, it was unprovoked. I felt like that was so uncalled for. He did not need to do that. But I guess his guilty conscience and his lack of emotional intelligence and just all sorts of verbal diarrhea. He does not hold water. I do not like him. Bye. Wow. Thanks. Tell us how you really feel. I do not like him. Bye. I uh, appreciate the voicemail. Thank you so much. Very interesting things you've got going on here. Well, look, I mean, it's a difficult conversation. Let's do this. Let's assume... I'm trying, I'm trying to do this in a way where it doesn't feel like I'm spoiling anything. But let's assume that he ends up... And again, okay, this is tough. And the, the, the more pregnant my pause, the more obvious this sounds. But let, let, let's put it this way. Because we, we really don't know what happens because there's been multiple spoilers in multiple directions. But I will say it would be better to find out in this moment during Fantasy Suites that, you, that he, the guy that you're with, say, 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 say he does get engaged. You better find that out now than then being led to believe it didn't happen and then being let down on camera. Like he was open. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I, I think that conversation was going to have to happen somewhere over the rainbow. Bruce says the only winners are the producers yet again. Not wrong there, Bruce Carly. Oh, let's go to Staten Island. You're up. Hey, this is Carly from Staten Island. Here's my take. Tell us. Gabby knew 
the moment he told her that uh, that he was going to have to be honest about what they did, she knew that she wasn't the one. Because if she was the one, then they could have kept it secret amongst themselves. That's ah, this is a good point. This is a good point. This is a hypothetical here. But what you're saying, Carly, I'm just going to break this down here. I'm going to stretch this out. It's all stretch. You're saying is that Gabby must have known she wasn't the one because if she was, why wouldn't Zach be able to keep them a secret with the others? That's what happened with Nick Vial. He only slept with one girl, and that's how he did. You know, that sleep with one girl, and then it's okay. By telling, by having to tell, Gabby knows. She may not, at least may not be the one. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a, you know, I, you know, this is why I love taking voicemails from you guys because I actually didn't really think of it that way. You know, we watch the show as it's edited, which is for the most part through the eyes of the lead. Um, and so to think of Gabby, she's going, we, we hooked up. He said he wasn't going to hook up with anyone. We hooked up. And then the next day, Zach comes back and said, Hey, just so you know, I, I'm telling people we hooked up. Um, she's like, Whoa, 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 you know, and, Clearly, not exactly the best news for her. Hey, Willy Billy sent me a $10 super chat. Thank you so much for that super chat. Willy Billy, first of the evening, much appreciated. If I miss anybody's super chat, just let me know. Sometimes we get a lot of comments and I miss them. Um, Anika says, Dave, I like the question you had before about what would have happened if Katie had been the one he hooked up with first. Yeah, if he hooked up with Katie first. And, and again, now I assumed... He, he wanted to tell Katie that he hooked up with Gabby because he also wanted to hook up with Katie. Does that, does that make any sense? I don't know if this will make any sense because none of this makes sense. <laughs> but we, oh, we got another Dave. Let's, let's go to another Dave. Uh, hey, Dave, it's Dave. One other thing. You know, I, I don't know how it ends, but if he doesn't pick Gabby, what's he going to say? Something was missing? The chemistry was off? Like, I... I mean, if he if if she was able to break through that night, how can he not butt pick her? So you know, I he he's really got himself into a pickle. So we'll see what happens by it. How can he? Yeah, I love the question. How can he not butt pick her? Um, butt pick her? Uh, it's a good question, and I'll say this: the energy. And again, this is going to sound weird because, like, this is a this is very a lot of hypotheticals happening tonight. The energy that led Zach to break his no sex uh, thing isn't necessarily the energy he got post sex. And I'm not saying I'm not saying this means Gabby's not good at sex. I'm just saying th something led them to bump Harrison's, as we say, pump their Palmers, right? Hit their bong on their little Johns, right? The whole nine yards, but. Whatever that was that got them to cross the finish line uh, doesn't necessarily mean that the sex was so good that um, that it that it furthered their connection. Let's go to Ohio. Hi, Dave. CJ from Ohio. I was watching tonight, and I wish KB had pushed back on Zach as to why he changed his position as far as being intimate or not as to was he horny was it in the heat of the moment what exactly changed his mind where he went back on his promise to himself that's all thank you great questions yeah so you want and this is why i wish we could have phone a friend i wish this would, wouldn't this be nice if this was like um you know who wants to be a millionaire i'd like to pull the audience everyone's like banger 58 <laughs> percent of the audience says you no. um you want katie or you would have liked katie to be like what was it in that fantasy suite that led you to change your mind which of course probably would have never gotten a good answer, but it still would have been good to hear. So we just got a comment that, and again, I've been watching the show, so I haven't seen this, but did anyone else see the reveal that Demi is back on the long delayed bachelor in paradise, Canada? I did not see that reveal, nor do I see it. Um, let's see if we can find out where that reveal is. Um, I am in, uh, I'm having troubles today with my 
um, my buttons that normally get me from point A to point B. But I don't see an update from Demi. Let's see if we have an update from Bachelor in Paradise, Paradise Canada. Did they announce Demi is on the show? And if they did, why wasn't she, why hasn't she announced it? Cast reveal. So we got the whole cast. Uh, we covered this on Bachelor. No, we actually didn't cover this on the podcast. I think we'll talk about this maybe tomorrow on the podcast. But we got a lot of Katie and Michelle's guys. And we have a couple people left over from last season of um, Bachelor in Paradise. Um, but I don't know if we have Demi. Where, where's the big reveal that there's Demi? Let's see. This men on this beach. That guy is totally going to be an F boy. There's something in the water. I'm back. Here we go. Back the Whoa, you're right. We just saw Demi, guys. Just burn paradise to the ground. Oh, you know what? No, 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 no. Demi, Demi's hosting a date. I'm sure of it. I actually know someone else who I know. I know. I know some alumni that turned down hosting the dates. It didn't. It didn't become stories because who cares? It was just like you know. You only get paid so much money to fly to Canada to host a date. My assumption is Demi is hosting a date. <laughs> Because like, you, you would have to believe they would have announced her in the cast. Chaos list. in the dictionary. I'd be there like this. Oh my God! Look. It's gonna be wild. Bachelor in Paradise Canada season premiere Monday, May eighth on City TV or stream anytime. Yeah, so we'll have to see if we can get someone to sponsor us our cable account so we can do that. Tapping the source said Gabby gonna have a rough week when she is deemed number two again. Oh yeah, this is um this is this is tough for Gabby here if if that is the case. After she essentially, you know, spills her guts about, you know, that, and it's, it, by the way, Gabby, Gabby was the victim of her boyfriend cheating on her. I am not blaming her one bit. With that said, it's got to be tough for, Ga this is why you need best friends, right? Because it's tough that Gabby opens up and tells Zach that, because, and, and, and I'd love to know your thoughts, leave a voicemail or, or your comments here. Is it too much sharing for Gabby to share that with Zach? Oh, uh, this part in particular, when Gabby said, I, I found out my boyfriend was cheating on me and I turned a blind eye. I feel like that's a very vulnerable thing to talk about. And I give her credit for that. I just wonder if Zach's going to look at her as a weaker person. Do you know what I mean? Um, I don't think Gabby's that way whatsoever. I just think sometimes you share certain things that help you work, become a better version of yourself. And you share that with therapists and your friends and your parents and your family. And then, and then you bring the better version of yourself to your relationship. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. Um, I don't know. Uh, peak of the pine says, how do you get city TV? Love Charlene joint. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll get, we'll, I'll make a video about it. And, um, I, and all that, um, but Janice says, who did he pick? Or no, sorry. Um, P Petal Richards Chambers says, who did he pick? I missed the episode. He picked um, uh, Gabby and Katie. Okay, sorry. I forgot. I blanked out on names there. All right, a couple more voicemails. Let's go back to Mimi in Pittsburgh. Hi, Dave. It's Mimi from Pittsburgh again. I just wanted to tell you that last week I was watching Game Show Network, and guess who I saw on Chain Reaction? Oh, yeah. You with your buddies. You with your mustache. I was rooting for you, but you guys didn't win. Bye. <laughs> yeah, boy, uh, the Game Show Network is making a lot of money off of me. Um, tapping the source said, will Dave cover Bachelor in Paradise Canada? I will 100% cover it. I think I primarily will cover it on the Bachelor Rush Hour podcast. That way I don't have to deal with graphics and all that, but I will be covering it primarily on the podcast, maybe not the YouTube channel. And for those that are new, we have a big audience here. Let me tell you guys something. It's going well. We have quickly become, and I'm, I'm not patting myself on the back, I'm patting you guys on the back. Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. It, it has changed a lot. It's got 103 or 104 episodes. We started it in November. We do it every day. I, guys, I did this every day on my honeymoon, okay? I, I just, just to show you I'm committed. I air it at midnight from Bali, 16 hours ahead. So I'm at midnight when it's West Coast 8 a.m., whatever the math is. I'm not letting this thing go. I'm going to make it the best thing we can make it. And we just got a new sponsor. Um, so we're going to have sponsor for three weeks in a row, which is amazing. Uh, the fact that people are putting their money into this podcast. Uh, and I want to thank you guys so much for that. If you haven't figured out how to be a part of it, you can just go to linktree.com slash Dave Neal. 
You can just type in Bachelor Rush Hour wherever you listen to podcasts. But if you go to linktree.com slash Dave Neal, and I will show you the URL right here, just in case you're missing it. There it is, right? So if you go to linktree.com slash Dave Neal, it's the first button. If you just press that, you can play the, the episodes every day. The new episode, every afternoon will be a new episode. Now, if you know how podcasts work, you can click on whatever the different apps are that you like to listen to, and you can download it that way. And you can see every single episode that we have. Oh, we have 102 episodes. 4.8 rating. Uh, hundreds of views, um, great new uh, reviews. I appreciate you guys so much. I really do. So so thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for making this kind of little pipe thing an actual, like, reliable part of the, the content that we have now. At least half of every podcast will be brand new content, plus it'll be, like, whatever I thought was the best content of the day. I'll kind of splice it all together to try to make it as fast as possible. So anyway, thank you guys all a million for that. And um, I got a lot of tabs open, so don't mind me. We're going to go back to some more voicemails right now. We got a ton of them, folks. A ton of voicemails out there. Let's go to our next one. Let's see who it is. We've got Haley from Nashville. Love that name. Hey, Dave. It's Haley from Nashville, Tennessee. I haven't been able to watch or get on the live streams recently. I've been really busy, and I've been, like, trying to catch up on this season. But I have a few thoughts about Gabby. I personally have been a huge fan of her. But the way that she kind of reacted to Zach saying he didn't want to be intimate kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I feel like it's kind of a double standard. Like, if a if the roles were reversed and a woman said, like Maddie Pruitt, that she didn't want to sleep with anyone during fantasy sleep, I feel like if the guy reacted that way, he would kind of be shamed for that. But just my thoughts. Let me know what you think. Yeah, I mean, and, and how how Gabby handles the fact that she's not the the winner out as of this moment. You know, like, she probably left that fantasy suite thinking it's in the bag. And then once he starts telling other people, it's like, loose lips sink ships, right? BT said, I think that there was something she should have shared, being, uh, being uh, um, Gabby mentioning, you know, that she turned a blind eye to her boyfriend cheating. But maybe early on and not in that moment. But Zach doesn't take that kind of stuff well. Yeah, so my, yeah, exactly. My whole point was, I don't think it's bad for the person to share. I just don't trust others to be evolved enough to handle those sorts of heavy conversations, at least not early on. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, Alex says, it's true. It does sometimes lead to an imbalance in the relationship. Not And not to say that Zach would then be like, I guess I can cheat on her because she'll turn a blind eye. But, you know, there whether you believe it or not, it's almost like, I don't know, it's like, it, it's, you know, we see how Zach kind of analyzes everything everyone tells him. And you don't want to, it's almost like you don't want to give him information that's going to make you not look like your best self. And at the same time, I still think everyone should be as vulnerable and authentic as possible um, in, 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 in a sort of um, perfect world. All right, let's go to Dave in Jersey City. Love the Daves tonight. Hey, Dave, it's Dave from Jersey City. Love the show. Just wanted to give you my take here. At the end of the show, Katie tells Gabby that she knows that they hooked up. Yes. Why doesn't Gabby turn around and say, hey, didn't you guys do the business in that tent date in the museum? Thanks so much. Have a good one, Dave. Now, thank you so much for the call. Dave in Jersey City. Jersey City is a beautiful city, with it, which has a beautiful view of uh, Manhattan, correct? Jersey City. Um, you can take the girl out of Jersey, but you can't take the Jersey out of the girl. All right. What, what do they say? Jersey girls aren't trash. Trash gets picked up. Okay, folks, come on. These are jokes. No one believes that. Jersey girls aren't trash. We love the Garden State. Jersey girls are nothing but roses in a garden uh, with, with thorns. And don't mess with a Jersey girl, and she will prick you. Um, and you respect that. Uh, we should do a whole Bachelor that's just Jersey. Let's just do Jersey Shore. Really? Didn't Jersey Shore perfect the uh, reality TV? I think in the sort of um, anthology of all that is humanity. Are these the right words, or are these just big words? I'm not sure. I think Jersey Shore will be looked at as the sort of Mona Lisa of reality TV. You know what I mean? The situation, the duck phone, uh, the smush room. I mean, you just can't. You just can't beat Jersey Shore. Either way, that's neither here nor there. Um, and maybe that's just for me, for like my slice of adulthood. Like people that are within a three-year age range of me know how, how pivotal the Jersey Shore was to their lives. Jim Tan Laundry, right? Okay, GTL. Uh, the situation. Okay, I, yeah, situation went to prison. Uh, that's a different type of situation. Uh, anyway, f so yeah, 
Yeah, I mean, lots of fascinating things going on. Um, I, I had a couple of comments that I just lost. So let me play another voicemail while I look for them. Uh, but uh, yeah, you guys are just crushing it with the phone calls today. Here's an out-of-country call from Canada. Hi, Sabine from Canada. This is just to answer your question about uh, whether or not Gabby should have revealed that she turned a blind eye right. when her boyfriend was cheating on her. In terms of Bachelor gameplay, if it's strictly seen as a game, it was a bad move. But if Zach really, really liked her and he really wanted to build a relationship with her, then it wouldn't have mattered. It would have been okay to reveal that. That's how I feel about it. You want to be able to reveal kind of all the ugliest parts of yourself to the person you're going to be with, right? So that's what I think. Bye. Yeah, it's almost like it's almost like if you have a history of being a drunk who cheats on your partner, you you would want to open up to your current partner, but then your current partner might be like, well, what's going to stop you from doing that again? Now, obviously, Gabby, she was the victim here. She was the victim of someone else cheating. I am not in one way or another saying Gabby did anything wrong. I just think, like you said, ideally, that would be a healthy conversation to have, but, you know, they're still early on in their relationship. Are those the types of things that spook somebody when it comes down to Katie, Ariel, or now that we know Ariel's gone, it's like we have Katie and Gabby here. Well, Katie knows what she, and I'm just playing a hypothetical. Katie knows what she wants. Katie's this. Katie didn't, uh, Katie uh, made it, uh, she didn't just accept the fact that I had sex with Gabby. She she pushed back and she shared her mood and this and that. Whereas Gabby let someone else hook up with her man. Like, you know, these might be the thoughts when someone, when all is equal where, where you look at. And again, I don't think those would be the thoughts of a rational person per se, but no, there's nothing about this TV show that's rational. Hey, this is Carly from Staten Island again. Here's my answer to when this all changed, where we went from don't ask, don't tell on the fantasy suites to everybody has to tell all the time. And that started again with Nick Vial on Andy Dorfman's uh, season when he sat on the couch at the, at the um, finale asking her why she slept with him if she wasn't going to pick him. And ever since then, it's been an issue. All right. Take care. Yeah. Bye. And of course, Nick did it in a way that was even worse because, look, whether you agree, equality is something I believe in. And with that said, I think it's still worse because of where society is with treating with slut shaming women more than men which does exist. You might not do it. I might not do it. But collectively, it is harder for a female on the show to have sex with multiple people and not get called names and DMs and all these things. You expect it from the men. You know, Obviously, the way Clayton handled it was bad, but you expect that to an extent. So when Nick sa says, hey, Andy, why did you, why did you have sex with me if you weren't going to pick me? He's essentially outing that there, he's exposing, as far as I know. I don't think... I don't, th and correct me if I'm wrong, I don't think it was already out in the open that they hooked up. So not only did he say it at the after the final rose, but he kind of called her out. And whether he was slut shaming her or not, he put her in a very bad bind, uh, metaphorically. Uh, it may be in the fantasy suite too. We don't know what kind of binds they're using over there. But he put her in a, in a rough spot and he did not come out looking good for that. So much so that that clip is very hard to find online. I'm not saying he or anyone else has tried to get it taken down, but it's very hard to find that clip online. All right, thank you, Carly in Staten Island. So so far we've gotten a call for we've gotten a call from Staten Island, but I don't think we've gotten a call from the other boroughs. Can we do this? Can we get a call from Brooklyn, Queens, Bronx, and Manhattan? Can we do that? Um, I'll settle for Hoboken, but I, I'd, I'd prefer the boroughs. If anyone wants to call from Rikers Island, call Collect. We'll, we'll, we'll answer. Um, wouldn't that be great if I'm just huge on the, in the prison circuit? Hey, bros, it's Monday night. They just put their shanks down and they just watch The Bachelor. All right, let's go to another Dave. Dave, this is Dave from Oregon. Uh, I'm just calling because I noticed everybody leaving their voicemails named Dave. And hey, I'm, now I'm Dave from Oregon. So there we go. All right, talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much, Dave. So many Daves. How many Daves make it right? Lion, or Lion, uh, uh, I'm hoping I'm not pronouncing your name wrong, says, do you think Zach will be more intrigued in Katie now because of the chase? I'll tell you what. Uh, at the very least, Zach now knows... Katie's got some backbone, not to say she didn't before, but he put her in a position where she chose in, in a way herself. I mean, she still went to the evening date, but she was like, look, 
I'm just wanting you to know how stupid you were to, to do this, you know? Um, which, of course, look, I can't... Zach, welcome to relationships. You know how many times you think you're saying the right thing? You think you're doing the right thing? You think you've got it all figured out? And then your partner's like, why would you... What were you even... How could... In today's... You know, and it's like, well, look. Uh, you know, with all that said... It still made it its way out of my mouth, you know. Um, all right. Well, it looks like we're caught up on voicemails. I tell you what, how are we doing on time? We'll go another 10 minutes. If anyone wants to leave a voicemail, now is your chance. We are wide open on the voicemail line. In fact, I'm actually going to, um, now that I have an extra monitor, I can leave my voicemail line. On. Oh, I have so many monitors. I literally, it just, my whole ceiling is just hanging with monitors. I love this. Uh, not the lizard uh, monitor, uh, but, um, you know, the TV screen. So anyway, should we go to Twitter? You know, someone someone earlier had said that, you know, they'd be interested, interested to hear if I have the same viewpoints as Nick Vial does regarding uh, the season or how, how Zach is handling things. Well, I think most people have that opinion where they go, look, no one's saying Zach's a bad guy. He's just like, oh my gosh. It feels like he's just got that thing in his head that has to like glob onto things. Uh, okay, let's see. All right, so Ariel is trending in part because of Little Mermaid. So, but I guess I thought it was going to be trending because of The Bachelor, but maybe that's a different Ariel. All right, let's go back to The Bachelor then and see what some trending tweets are. Imagine having, okay, we already got that one. What happened to your overnight with Rachel Recchia? Uh, some Shrek, Shrek over here in the conversation in the swamp. Yeah, that's funny. Literally, Shrek's like, I'm an ogre. Yeah. Zach says no sex this week. Zach, day two, I had sex. Um, voicemail line is open for anybody. 401-213-9828. As you guys know, tomorrow we will have a ton of content. This is like, you know, I'm still fresh in the moment. So when, you know, when the show, you know, just, just so you know, for my own content schedule, stories usually surface like, um, Something something will come up. Like, will we get a comment from Ariel or Ariel, whatever her name is? Uh, tragic news today about Amanda Bynes, by the way. She's okay, which is good. Um, she was found kind of near where I live, uh, n- nude. And, and as far as the story goes that I know, she was coming out of a psychotic break and uh, flagged down a car and asked them to take her and c- called 911. And she was put in a hold um, you know, I'm glad, I mean, scary stuff. I just saw that cause it popped up scary stuff. Indeed. Uh, wishing her the best and hoping we can sort of keep trying to destigmatize some of these mental health issues that exist. All right. Um, we are no stranger to that, to mental health issues, um, with this franchise. So let's see what Ariel said during the trailer, um, that she posted for, um, first of all, let's see the last time she posted. So recap of New York, the rats were taller than Zach. So when was she in New York? The show Zach around my favorite city. Oh, sorry. This was last. New York is always going to be the most romantic city to me. This was last week. So she, on the official bachelor page, she typed out down vote when it came to the trailer for her, uh, for her fantasy suite. And I don't know if there was any more meaning to that. Um, Let's see if there's any clues here. What a beautiful dress. So she's just, uh, so it says 18 or 81, depending on, I think it's backwards. So it says 18. That doesn't look like a clue. We're just looking to see if there's any clues here about what might've gone down. I don't see any clues. You could always look a little harder. And who's that? Some fashion people. All right. So anyway, nothing from Ariel. Let's see if we have anything from Nick here. Um, he usually tweets during the show. Um, do do do. Not seeing anything. Maybe he took the night off. Well, not us. No nights off here, folks. All right, we're going to get out of here in a few minutes, but let's go to some more voicemails here. Last chance to get your voicemails in 401-213-9828. Last chance to get your voicemails in. Lots of Dave's calling in. Hi, Dave. Me again from Canada. Um, as you were talking about fantasy suites and some caller mentioned, uh, you know, there was a long time where people never said anything about it. I've been watching The Bachelor for a very long time, very long time. I must have been 14 when I started and I'm in my 30s now. And I remember that I did not make the connection 
that people had sex in fantasy sleep until Nick Vial. I know that sounds insane, but that cast basically a, a shadow, or I guess it, it was in the shadows for a really, really long time for probably not just me, like a lot of people who watch the show. So it's changed the tone of the show in many ways, especially in the last few seasons. It's been very sex forward, right? So anyways, I don't know if there was a point in there, but uh, that, this was my third voicemail. Have a nice evening. And did you ever day. think you'd be calling a voicemail line on a random YouTuber? No, I'm happy for you, uh, and I'm happy to have you. Uh, thank you. The long-distance phone call is coming in from Canada here. Now, the question is, did the show was the sh- is the show responsible for this new age viewpoint on fantasy suites, or did this sort of start happening with the Me Too movement? And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but the idea that the power dynamic that exists when you're the lead and you get to choose who you will take into the private rooms. Now, in the end, of course, consent has to come from both parties. We know that, but there is a, it's like, it's not just about consenting in the moment. It's about if I like person A and I have sex with person B, you got, you you almost just have to take the risk at knowing who the person is going to be that you're going to hook up with and just hook up with them. That's what Matt James did. And he's in a happy relationship because of all the issues he had to deal with. He didn't have to deal with, you know, whenever he fights with Rachel Kirk Connell and she goes, why don't you just hook up with Serene again? You know, like that doesn't have to happen because you know that must have happened. Caitlin Bristow, Sean. He's like, oh, why don't you go bang Nick? You know what I mean? You know, that's how the fights happen. Brutal too. All right. Let's go back to Dave. It's Dave. Hey, Clark. Dave. It's Dave again from Jersey City. I think you got very lost with the Jersey Shore thing, but I'm calling again. Just well, to mention- I know that Jersey City's not Jersey Shore. I just got stuck on Jersey. Yes. And didn't Katie presumably hook up with Zach. They said they stayed up all night in the museum. Isn't that worth mentioning here that he probably has slept with her already? Thanks so much. Bye. All right, Dave, thank you for calling back. You are 100% right. I met you. I, I got you right. I did get hung up on the Jersey Shore thing. No, it was, um, and I think I have a video about this. Let's see if I can find it. Um, Katie had denied, Katie... Uh, Dave, Neil, Zach. Let's see if we can just find this. I think Katie had denied that she what that she that she, she said she didn't have sex um, with Zach. Uh, maybe I won't be able to find this. Yeah. Uh, either either way. Uh, oh, Zach dishes on overnight date with Zach. Okay, let's let's just have a listen. Oh, did I record this while in Bali? Boy, I just really don't stop. I mean, send a super chat if you are impressed with the work we have going on here. Well, yeah, I was like, okay, like maybe like a little gift basket, some soup, some tea, get some slippers. There's little- By the way, for those listening on Bachelor Rush, your date, you get a one-on-one, you such, guys get a whole museum by yourselves, pacing. and then you spend the night. So let's just yeah. go right to spending the night. Were you <laughs> shocked about that? <laughs> let's get right into the good let's stuff, just okay? Let's get right into it. Okay. Um, Were you sh- I think Grocery Store Joe's a pretty good interviewer for The Bachelor stuff. I just think, don't you? Isn't it funny that my audio, it's a little echoey, but my audio on the other side of the world in Indonesia is better produced than the slop they're giving us? Poor Aaron over here. Yeah, no, I was super shocked, super excited though when he did ask me. And I didn't really know what to think of it of the time, but when we walked around the corner and we saw kind of like the camp set up and the tent, I was like blown away. I thought it was so cute, so romantic. And the thing with me that- So cute, so romantic. Well, thank the set decorator who set it up because I'm sure Zach- Shut up, Dave. Katie Thurston. (laughs) Construction off in the distance. Zach kind of snoring a little bit and I just couldn't (laughs) sleep. Hence why I was like, I got no sleep. I think Zach got a little bit of sleep, but not, not me. Okay. Okay, and okay. you guys pushed. You guys pushed the pushed the beds together. Oh heck yeah, we did. <laughs> did was you? Cold? Whoa, was it cold? whoa, whoa! They pushed the bed. two cots and either. <laughs> <laughs> Purely survival. It was actually quite chilly in there, um, but he basically so like I remember we were having a conversation and then he was like, "Okay, good night," and I was like, "What?" I was Just like, in so the I started, middle of the convo. Yeah, so I started talking again. I'm like, I don't think I heard that right. And then, like, <laughs> okay, okay, good night. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, so 
I think it was presumed, is that the right word, that they didn't have sex. I, I even, I might have missed that part. I think she said they didn't get intimate. So no, to answer your question long-winded, no, they didn't. Hey, Dave, this is Anastasia calling from Houston, Texas. Hi, Anastasia. I think Zach handled everything so poorly with Gabby and Katie, with Gabby completely revealing to Katie and the whole world that they were intimate with one another and just completely breaking Gabby's trust. And then he should have never told Katie. The only way he should have told Katie is that Katie is the final one. They're engaged. And after the show wraps up, after everything's done, after the then show. she can ask if he was intimate and then he could be honest. But I only would have told her only if she wanted, only if Katie wanted to know. Right. Wait. Uh, Zach, I just, uh he never should have set the parameters to begin with. Thanks, Dave. <laughs> Bye. It doesn't feel like a Seinfeld episode. I set the parameters. I shouldn't have done the parameters. What's the deal with parameters? You don't need to know what side you're on. Boundaries. Who sets them? Uh, anyway, funny stuff. You guys are great. Lisa in Virginia. Hi, this is Lisa from Virginia. I'm calling regards to the episode from The Bachelor tonight. I told... I thought Zach conducted himself very bad. <laughs> what he did to Katie was so wrong. He ruined the date. And like she said, she didn't need to know that. At first, I gave the guy a lot of credit, thought he was really good. But he is very, very immature. And I cannot believe he did that to her. And I'm just saying, I don't understand why the young lady just couldn't leave, because that was totally wrong to put her in that position and make her feel that bad. Thank you. Thank you so much. Lisa in Virginia. Virginia is for lovers, and we love Lisa. Yeah, I feel like the producers, as when they're interviewing for The Bachelor, they're like, um, they're like, all right, Zach, if you were The Bachelor, would you... Uh, would you decide to have no sex in the fantasy suite? And he goes, yes. And they go, okay. And they go, but if you did have sex, would you tell the other women? And he goes, I would be, I would have to. And they go, okay. <laughs> and they're like, and do you have a, uh, you know, whatever. They just, uh, they're like, this is the one. And that's what we realize. You go, well, Zach's immature. Well, you know, they do have psychologists that, you know, they, they do have a formula for what they like. And Zach kind of possesses some of the same traits that Clayton had, and we love Clayton. I We do, right? I mean, I think we really do like Clayton. But in the moment, Clayton thought he was doing the right thing by bringing the woman up, and, he, and he's going, I'm going to spill the beans. I'm going to clear the air. No secrets here. Hey, Rachel, I had sex with Gabby. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Rachel's crying on the thing, you know? So it's great intention. It's just in a normal real life situation, you probably workshop these ideas by your best friend and they go, leave that part out. Don't say this unless they ask you, you know, whatever. Um, very funny, very, very funny phone calls tonight. This might, this might be one of the best voicemail nights we've had. We're going to get out of here in a few minutes. Again, very last chance. I'm going to close this off in the next 30 seconds. Last chance for a voicemail, 401-213-9828. And if you want, we're going to have a in-depth uh talk tomorrow on the podcast tomorrow afternoon bachelor rush hour with dave neal so you're going to want to check that out every afternoon bachelor rush hour with dave neal okay so let's go to our final couple voicemails here hi dave this is the fairy vixen calling from lafayette just want to say welcome back thank you great to see you hope you had a great honeymoon you and tasha and bale uh like seeing y'all's instagram photos so cute um yeah tonight's episode was crazy probably the wow most intense fantasy suites i've ever seen i don't think i appreciate zach's honesty but honestly just kind of dropping that bomb on katie's date like the first thing i don't know about that i think maybe he should have waited or i don't know just kind of ruined the whole mood but i appreciate his honesty but you know <laughs> I probably would have just maybe waited or I don't know. <laughs> I'm enjoying the show, enjoying your recaps and like to see what else, uh, what the audience thinks about it. So, yeah. All right. 
Thanks, Dave. Much appreciated. Bye. Bye. Oh, thank you so much for the call with the B at the end from Lafayette. I guess, I'm guessing Louisiana or is Lafayette somewhere else? Um, and D Mix says uh, regarding the podcast on the phone, there's no need to download the podcast. You can literally just listen. Yes, every phone comes. And if, by the way, if anyone doesn't know how to do this, if you send me a private message, I will go out of my way to help you. I have no problem being customer service. But everyone who has an iPhone at least has the purple iPhone thing, right? Where you click on that and then it'll pop up the podcast apps and then you can literally just find Bachelor Rush Hour. Uh, there it is. And you can just start listening or listening to advertisements. Either one. That's how you can do it. Uh, but either way, um, Tapping the Source says, women slut shame other women publicly way more than men ever slut shame women. I, I love a good generalization. I'm not going to take the bait on this one. But I will say, the audience is 90% women. So most of the shaming and praising and everything that happens in Bachelor Nation is women because it's a women-centric show. At least... I can only look at my own demographics. 92% of my audience is women. So I assume that it's mainly a women-centric show uh, that watch. So I don't think there's too many men being like, dang it, Gary, did you see Zach Bang? You know, whatever. I don't, I mean, I'm, I'm sure it happens. But the majority that, that are there are, uh, are, the lady, are the ladies. The Fairy Vixen calling from Lafayette. Oh, we already, oh, did we get this one? Yes, uh, Dave, I was just wondering why they cut Katie's fantasy suite date short. Um, That's a good question, and I'm going to cut you off there. I think there might have been like a storm. I don't think they planned on having dinner in their in the fantasy suite. I think that was their sort of plan B setup, not that plan B. Um, but yeah, let's go to Jen in uh, Ontario. Hey, it's Mrs. D from Hamilton, Ontario. I know it's so late. I'm hoping this might still squeeze in. I watched this episode with my aunt and my best friend. And every time Zach just made another decision, we're like, oh, you dummy, you dummy, you dummy. I'm sure you've covered all of this already. I've only been half listening, Dave. I'm sorry. I'm a bad mod. Um, but yeah, the, Zach's a dummy, but it's okay. They're under a lot of pressure. Anyways, have a good night, everybody. Yeah, he was under a lot of pressure, all right. Uh, he exploded with pressure there on the date. Um, may, you know, maybe, and again, this maybe this is going to sound creepy, but maybe his day with Ariel went so well, he couldn't possibly resist with Gabby. Does that make sense? Um, boy, we are speculating. All right, last couple of voicemails. Hey, I picked up some tidbits on the Katie day to the camp out. She said it was really cold. So maybe, you know, Zach should have turned down the AC. I mean, there's the shrinkage factor, which, you know, you have to figure that's maybe an issue. Right. And, uh, you know, he was able to keep it under control weeks earlier, and that could have helped in this instance. So something to think about going forward. I'm very proud that we've pushed you in over the hour limit, by the way. Oh, yeah. I mean, look, you guys, I, I challenged you guys before tonight's episode. I said, look, if you're going to want to, if you guys want me to do Bachelor live streams, I'm going to need more viewers, more likes, more comments and all that. And you guys have just crushed it tonight. We're over 500. I want to give you guys, I'm going to extend for five or 10 more minutes just to thank you guys for being over 500 people in the chat. Thank you so much. Next week we're next week i assure you let's get our diet cokes lined up we are going to have an east coast recap and quite possibly a west coast recap and quite po i might just keep the recap open the whole night it might it's going to be it's uh I, I told the i told the wife i said we are in for like we need uh if 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 i was a farmer the, and then i would say this the last three months metaphorically have been very dry uh, out there on the on the fa on the farmland, and I'm praying for rain, and I'm hoping Monday night we. I hope the heavens open up. Not no, respectfully. I hope everyone's fine, but you know I want mess. Just give me mess, and um, I'll have the flood. I'll have the boots on, ready to go, and I will till the land. Uh, for for tea, I will till the land for tea. <laughs> All right, but yeah, shrinkage may have happened. You know, you know when you get cold, you are your blood flows away from your extremities to protect your core. And let me tell you something, that's a tough place to be when the nookie's happening or not happening. Hi, Dave. This is Tequila. No, not Tequila. <laughs> it's Tequila with an H. Um, oh, Tequila. Um, it's a Hebrew name, in case you're wondering. Anyway, I'm me. calling from Baltimore, Maryland, um, and maybe I missed this. I, I could have missed it, um, but I feel like the obvious question, did Zach 
end up sleeping with Katie also, or did they not sleep together specifically? That is my question. Thanks so much. Look, it, it's a great question. I'm going to answer it briefly, but I'll just say this. Because you guys have got me over 500 viewers in the live chat, I'm going to keep the chat open, and I've just opened up the voicemail line. So if you haven't called in, now is your chance. I would like to offer this opportunity to people that have never called in. Please give us a chat. What do you think, Tasha? You want to come in here and say hi? Tasha goes, nope, busy. Uh, what did you think? Of, who do you want Zach to pick? She goes, she doesn't know. You haven't, you, can you name more than one name? She says, no. What are you eating? Oh, Tasha's eating rice. Um, it's uh, We got over 500 people in the chat. Can you believe that? So exciting. So I will open the voicemail line one last time, 401-213-9828. And the question that was just asked from Tehillah, a beautiful Hebrew name in Baltimore, Maryland, home of um, crab cakes. Am I correct? Crab cakes? Not crabby, but crab. Um, crabby cakes. Uh, but uh, crabby cakes Crabby cakes was the mood that uh, Gabby was in when she found out her sex life was exposed. She was very crabby in crabby. All right. Um... So the question is, did Zach end up sleeping with Katie? As far as I could tell, I, th I assumed. I assumed Zach w wanted to tell Katie because he, I assumed Zach told Gabby, hey, just so you know, that, that thing I promised about not hooking up with people, that, that deal's done. I assumed he said that because he was going to hook up with Katie. But then when we see Katie and Gabby together at the very end, Katie goes, I guess you were the one that he slept with. And my assumption there, and let me know what you guys think, my assumption there was that she said, you were the one. And I don't have the transcript here. Meaning, Katie didn't sleep with him. Although, if you had asked before that scene, I would have assumed that they absolutely slept together. Um, my only thought process would be, if the night with Gabby went so poorly that he knew he didn't have to sleep with Katie to end up with her, versus... Or, or the night with Gabby went so well he has no plans of keeping Katie. And then he wants to go back with Gabby and say, Hey, look, just so you know, I didn't even sleep with her. You know, you know, you know, you're doing the bare minimum when you go up to the lady you're about to propose to. And you're like, look, just so you know, I didn't bang the other girl, you know, <laughs> like that's, it's like, well, thank you so much. You, you, you knight in shining armor. Um, yep. Standards have lowered for sure. Hi, Dave. This is Amy from Illinois. This Hi. is actually my first time tuning into a live show. Woo! My question is, do we know if Zach told Ariel about what happened with Gabby? It seems like that probably didn't happen, given that he knew he was letting Ariel go, but I don't think that was ever really shown or clarified. Either way, Ariel is a class act, and I think probably one of the better female contestants that the show has had in a while. Um. Thanks. Bye. As we know, Charity is the next Bachelorette that has been announced. A lot of people wanted Ariel. Hey, you, you don't want to pit people against each other. They both would have been fantastic. Ariel and the way when she was, when Zach was talking after he dumped her, Ariel was quiet. And I was thinking this could go one of two ways. She could be fuming on the inside, ready to churn him out and give him another one. Or in what we saw happen, Ariel was about as kind and gracious I think a human could be given the circumstance where she just was dumped after opening up and spending nights together and introducing her parents, all of those emotions put into it. I don't know if there has been a more graceful exit. Um, and we'll have to see on the after the final rose if her tune changes. As we know, we all process emotions differently. She could watch this back and go, oh yeah, I was led on to this whole time. And then she could start having questions and receipts about why this happened or why that happened. But in the moment, Ariel definitely showed, at least as far as we could tell, her true colors, which were as beautiful on the inside as she is on the outside. Uh, where that where that will have her stand in Bachelor Nation, I'm not sure. If she wants Bachelor in Paradise, it's hers. Um you know, we always say like, oh, so-and-so would be great for the for Bachelorette the next year. And then and then we meet new people and it's just like the beat goes on. So sometimes you just don't get it. Uh, and, and, or or in some, some other people have said, look, scrap Bachelor. Make Ariel and... And this is what happened with Katie and Michelle and it didn't really work out that great. And it happened with Gabby and Rachel where there's they, so many people want so many different 
solution. So they said, you know what? We'll give you both. But could the show scrap a season of The Bachelor and make it Ariel season? They absolutely could do it. I don't know if that's going to happen. But thank you, Amy from Illinois, with your first time call. Let's go back to, oh, let's go to our friend Carly in Salt Lake City. Hey, Dave. It's Carly from Salt Lake City. I don't know if this has already been discussed because it just ended here on the West Coast. So I'm just jumping on. But why did Zach tell Katie, who he never even told her what his plans were anyway, and she obviously didn't care. He didn't even say one thing to Ariel, though. I do not get that. Do you think they cut it out? Like, he, even as he, she left, he didn't even tell her the truth. He was so adamant about being honest. It just makes no sense to me. So, I feel bad for all the girls. And, yeah, I think he super messed up. Anyway, talk to you later. Good, Bye. Good questions. Thanks so much. Uh, and I know, I, I know this has been asked a few times, and maybe I haven't uh, addressed it. My viewpoint is that Zach knew Ariel was his final three. He knew Ariel was third place, bronze medal, and there was no need to tell her because he was sending her home. There was no need to add in, hey, I told you all these things, and then I violated that. It didn't matter to the, to the point where she wasn't. If, if she was going to be in the running still, as Katie is, along with Gabby, if Ariel was still in the running, she would absolutely have every right to, to, to know that. Um, but uh, he was sending her home, and he must have already known he was going to send her home. Okay, Madeline in Florida, you're up. Hey, Dave, it's Madeline from Florida. Um, I, Watching it, I kind of have a controversial opinion. Um, do I agree that he should have told Katie on the day the way he did? No, absolutely not. But imagine her finding out later down the road because she is such good friends with Gabby. I mean, either way, she was going to find out. Um, I don't love the way that he did that, but she had to know. Um, just full transparency going into a relationship. Don't agree with his decisions, but I see why he did it. Thanks. I I agree. I agree. I don't know um, when that would have happened. Um, I don't know when he should have had that conversation, but of course it would have not ended well no matter when he had it. And maybe if he ends, if he ends up picking Gabby, maybe he can avoid that conversation. If Gabby's the quote unquote one, but, and by the way, you guys have left so many amazing comments. I can't possibly get to all of them. I have to like fly through them. So many comments. Um, but, uh, Either way, if, if, if someone wanted to ask me a comment, a question, and you haven't already, or you did and I didn't get to it, try to ask me again. I'm just, I just can't get through all of these. My producer, I fired my producer uh, for not hitting the like button enough. No, I don't have a producer. Um, either way, uh, here's what Dana has to say. Dana says, Gabby is no innocent bystander. He told her no sex and she pushed the envelope and we saw that when they interviewed her. She said that she was going to seduce him and now she's playing the victim. Well, I don't agree with you. I could be wrong, but I think I think Ariel said that she was going to seduce Zach. I think Gabby said, I won't seduce you. We cannot assume, and I know you're not doing this, or maybe you are, but I don't think your intentions are bad. We can't assume that Gabby was the evil party that it wasn't like Zach was in a, in a, in a marriage and Gabby was the home wrecker. No, Zach said, we're not going to have sex. They both, I mean, Gabby, we have to remember that Zach is a fully grown autonomous human and he decided to have sex. So there is no who convinced him one way or another. He made that decision and that's on him. Um, but as far as, Gabby saying she seduced him. Uh, so you guys leave a comment and let me know. I think that was Ariel who said she was going to do it. Uh, but either way, I love I love a controversial opinion. By all means, if there's any other controversial opinions, please let us know now. All right, we're about to wrap this puppy up. Hey, one last thing. I, I think Zach watches this show, your show, Dave. So I'm I'm hoping he maybe takes this advice because if he ends up with Katie. And, you know, it's after the final rose. He could try the purity culture play where he could say, I, I wanted our first time to be special. I wanted to wait. Mm. And, you know, that that's a play. Now, it would make uh, Gabby not feel so great, but he could, he could spin that. Um, he might be the worst heel of all time if he went in that direction, but 
it's it's a legitimate option that he should consider. So Zach, if you're listening to Dave and Dave, uh, take that into consideration. But the duck. Bye. <laughs> yeah, thank you so much, Dave. And that'll be our final voicemail of the evening, I believe. Unless uh, let me let me close the voicemail line off. All right, if you don't call in three, two, one, you don't get a voicemail. Uh, let's wrap this puppy up. So many great voicemails. One of the best we've ever had. I'm really looking forward to next week. Now, uh, 550 plus people in the chat. Thank you guys so much. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. You might not know this, but I make some videos exclusively for those that subscribe to my channel. It's free. YouTube subscriptions are free. Now, if you want to be a part of the below the belt good good stuff, the uh the only f- not the only fans, the uh, Patreon, I'm the only fans of Patreon. If you want if you want um, nudity, not physical nudity, but like emotional nudity, go to patreoncom Neal, and that's where I'll have my daily content will be going live. I think every day this week. Plus I have my stand-up set that I did. I think I showed you guys a little bit of this earlier, but if you're new to the channel, I do stand-up comedy and I had this set where I got heckled by I got heckled by um, a uh, a Harry Potter fan. Did you guys see the movie Lumos? Did he take a pillow or was he just doing Adderall? Like, what was that? <laughs> it's my drug audience over here. I can already tell. <laughs> you know, it was Adderall. It was just about Adderall. No, little, too many women over here. That guy's a drug dealer. That's, a, that's for sure their coke dealer. That's like, he's like, I'm their friend. You're their coke dealer who also, you know, pays to see them perform. All right, we love you. Thank you. You guys are great. Um, did you hear that the Slytherin chick was the one heckling too? I'm, I'm on to all of you guys. <laughs> it's all me, Hufflepuff Dave in the back, just knows the shit. Yeah, thank you. I got, a, I got a polite clap from another Hufflepuff, yeah. Hufflepuffs don't sell stand-up tickets, they don't. They're like, ah, oh, the Sunday American Idol's on. I appreciate my fellow Hufflepuff, thank you so much for that. I, um, I'm banging a uh, Slytherin, no, what's going on? What's, where they, my wife is. Um, listen, now, what's the other one? What's, yeah, she's like, all right, you're Gryffindor. <laughs> That's not my wife, but she must know my wife, I guess. The Gryffindors, they're all walking together in chat rooms. I don't know, I didn't realize this would be a Harry Potter set. Let's do material. Um, all right, so anyway, I'll have that full set tomorrow on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal if you want it. Now, look, I closed the voicemail line. You ever see a movie where the walls are closing in, like an action movie, and someone slides under the wall, like feet first, and they kind of like get through the gate before the doors come down. That's this next voicemail. So this is our final voicemail of the evening. Have a listen. Hey, this is Carlene from Staten Island again. Hey. Here's just a little production note um, that I feel like they did a little bit of sex shaming on Gabby because if you go back and you play it back as they're coming into their fantasy suite dinner, they're playing a little snake charmer music. Nee, 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 So it sounds like they were trying to make Gabby into this seductress as opposed to that it was an equal decision on them to decide to have sex. Just a thought. Go back and listen. You'll hear it. Bye. Thank you very much, Staten Island. Was that Staten Island calling in? Thank you so much for that. Yeah, Carlene from Staten Island. Uh, yeah, or Carly from Staten Island. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. I, I thought they did that to Ariel, kind of, where Ariel was the one who looked bummed out. Ariel was like, I think, because uh, I'm sure they set Ariel up. Tell us some positive things about the fantasy suite. And Ariel's like, I love physical intimacy. This is important. And then, but what they did was they edited Zach's version first, where it's like, we're not going to have sex. And Gabby's like, we, or Ariel's like, I think this is important. We do this. So they made it seem like she was the thirsty one and he wasn't um but either way there uh yeah 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 um maybe says indiana jones slid under the door yeah that's what that was and i slide under the door barrel scraping dave strikes again and thank you alex for saying you think so quick on your feet there was one other part of the set where i was talking about it got really dirty this was actually not a long set but it got really dirty where we were talking about if hufflepuffs were doing oral sex but not, you know, it is late enough to share this. Yeah, I, uh, I actually, uh, I'll tell you this story. This is uh, my big justice story. Oh, no, that's not. Let's see if it's back here. I'm not just going to play immigration. No, no, maybe it's at the very end. I got married and... Uh, here- no, no, it's, sorry. I was pushing my own head down. Productive, and um, one of my New Year's resolutions was to not bring my cell phone into the bedroom. You know what I mean? Yeah, and so much, so much procrastination. So ah. now I just uh, jerk off in the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> I have, um, by the way, I gotta ask the ladies, what the fuck? Okay, so I'm trying, I can't believe I showed that that long without any swears. 
I thought I had a Hufflepuff version here, but I don't want to go through the whole thing. I guess I'll have to show it with you guys tomorrow on the Patreon. Um, I had a I had a bit about. Oh, it was very strange. Maybe I'll tell you what. Let me play it, and then I'll I'll look for the I'll look and see if I can find the uh, the clip of it here where I was pushing my own head down. Maybe it didn't play. And it, oh yeah, oh, is this it? A job you never got, you can. He's here. Um, just like the other guy, I only get auditions to play villains. So I saw, but I look, I don't look Hufflepuff. You know what I mean? A Hufflepuff where it counts on the inside. I fuck like a Hufflepuff. And, uh, are you ready? Are you done, honey? I just fucking go down. I put my own head down. The Hufflepuff does. We're like, we got this. That's Hufflepuff. Yeah. Yeah. Just ask a guy, what's your house? Hufflepuff, get down on there. You're like, yeah. No consent from the Hufflepuff man. Okay. All right. <laughs> it got weird. It got weird. We got some Hufflepuff jokes. Hey, Willie Billy sent another super sticker. Willie Billy, the uh, player of the evening. Thank you so much for the uh, $10 super chat. That's much appreciated. And I think we're going to get out of here. I'll try to answer some of your questions on the way out. I love Kayla's comment here. Kayla says, uh, let's go. Born again, virgin is not real. If you have sex before marriage, then you are not a virgin. If you can't reserve that process, uh, celeb- celebrate is real and fine um yeah i think born again virgin's a weird term but i understand what people mean when they say it but it's like it's like i'm also a born again you know uh well it, uh, i don't know there's so many analogies i don't want to be offended i don't feel like offending anyone right now i feel like having an edible and going to bed and that's what i'm gonna do that's it for me everybody and um let's see uh I'll play some music for you guys on the way out and um, if there's any last comments, feel free. Hit the like button if you haven't already. I much appreciate that. It really helps the. Uh, it really helps YouTube know that we uh, are killing it, and it helps them uh, recommend our channel to new bachelor people. And boy, does that help us all out! All right, folks. Well, that's it for me. We'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Something Bye, everybody. Finally, not afraid to say it. No, it took some time. Used to read it in a press release What I was going through But I got stories too Thanks for the super chats, everybody. The fear of being last Like everybody knows when you don't If every feeling passed Then why am I still stuck with this one should see it through and change my point of view. Shana wants a super quick recap. Zach tells Ariel he's not going to have sex with anybody. Zach tells Gabby that. Zach hooks up with Gabby. They have sex. Then before Zach's date with Katie, Zach tells Gabby, hey, I'm going to tell people we had sex. And, Kate, and Gabby's like, you're violating my trust. And then Zach doesn't have sex with Katie, but tells her anyway. She gets upset in Shrek's swamp. Then Zach does the uh, rose ceremony where he gives a rose to Katie and Gabby. The end. Thank you so much. Now what is going on? And if you haven't already, check out Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. Rush over there right now and subscribe. Bachelor Rush Hour, the podcast. Every day, afternoons. But I can change the truth. Good song. I try to catch it, but the moment. Get rested up for next Monday. It is going to be an all nighter, folks. All nighter tomorrow, next Monday. We are going to break the live stream. Nailed it indeed. Five, six, seven, eight. And Katie almost got attacked by a monkey. Whether it comes from the, whether it comes from Pray for Ariel. Whether it comes from the, and it's down to our final two. Who will it be? Katie. Gabby. 
or nobody. Coming up next week, we'll have content all day tomorrow. Patreon every morning, 10 a.m. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. Good night, everybody. Thanks again for all of your hard work tonight. Really appreciate it. We'll see you later.